Welcome to Douglas County News Exchange. I'm your host, Sabrina Hayes. School is back in session and we have some school news that you need to know. We will tell you about a new unique business in Lithia Springs and we'll show you a free way to get ice cream. All of this and more today on Douglas County News Exchange. First up on the show is an opportunity for you to have a night of entertainment in Lithia Springs. The Hidden Escape Escape Room recently opened off of South Sweetwater Road, so it's a closed, convenient way to get out of the house and have some fun. Here are the owners to explain what an escape room is and how you can play. My wife and I played our first escape room back in October of last year. It was just amazing, uh, the experience that, that we had. I, in fact, we left after it was over, and I was like, what just happened to us? You know, it was just amazing. So the very next night, we were like, we've got to go again. And so we went and played another room. This time, the experience was really not so great. And so at that moment we realized, hey, you know, not every escape room has, you know, amazing quality. We started talking about, hey, we're, we're kind of interested in this maybe as a business opportunity. It might be, you know, something we could do on weekends and nights, you know, while I'm still working. One of my wife's cousins, her husband got very interested. And so he and I both started working on this project together him building an escape room in Lufkin, Texas, and us here in Lithia Springs, here in Douglas County. And so we started the build out really in February, and from February, we worked all the way until we opened on June the 10th uh, of this year. It's something to do at night, something really uh, super fun. I wouldn't say it's relaxing because once you get into the room, um, you pretty much want to figure this stuff out. Um, you can bring your family, it's very um, family friendly. A lot of people drive by here on South Sweetwater Road and they see our sign. Uh, one guy, he pulled in, he was sitting out in the parking lot. He wasn't even, he didn't bother coming in, but I went out and talked to him. He's like, I thought this was a clock shop, you know? <laughs> anyway, so they came in, they come in uh, the door, and of course we greet them. Uh, and we find out, number one, what their names are, if they have a scheduled booking with us already. If they don't have a booking, we'll find out when we have an available time for them to play. Uh, if they do have a booking, then of course the next step is to take them over to the side of the desk where the iPads are and we have waivers for them to sign and we'll share with them a little bit about escape rooms. Usually we have a couple of tips that we give them. You know, for example, it's really important to communicate. Uh, most of our players, if they're not talking to each other while they're playing the games, they're probably not going to escape. The second tip we usually give is for people to read their clues. They're periodically throughout the game you might find yourself looking at something that is actually relevant to the game in the form of, of, of a clue that you need to read. And so often people will pick these up and just kind of slip, skim through them real quick and they never really pay attention to what it actually says. And that's, you know, that's not the best thing. So we encourage them to read those thoroughly. During the course of our games, we actually have clues that you can ask for. If, for example, you really get stuck and you're not really sure what to do next or, or maybe you're not sure what to do with what you're working on, we will customize a clue for you that you can request during the game. You have four opportunities to do that. You're allotted one hour to try and escape our, our rooms. We do have a number of people though that still don't escape in spite of using their clues and sometimes a little bit of a nudge from, from me and my wife. So they still have a good time either way. Social media is a huge part of life now, but when you're in that room, it is solely you are focused on talking to people and really getting into their heads and seeing what they figured out. And it's just your, your line of communication is open the entire time. So it's really a cool experience in that aspect. When my wife and I were looking at this business, we realized that on the west side, especially along the corridor for I-20, we realized that we really don't have an escape room on our side of town. And so at this particular moment, to my knowledge, we are the first escape room in Douglas County. Unless there's somebody that's out there that's not, <laughs> that has not made themselves known. 
doing an escape room is fun for just um, your friends or your family, but something that we offer is uh, team building or corporate events to bring your team in so they can uh, build their communication better. And that's something that a lot of people probably don't offer. For anybody that's re looking to reach out to us here at The Hidden Escape, the easiest thing to do is visit our website, thehiddenescape.com. Uh, it's very, very easy to navigate to our booking page and find out exactly what times are available. However, there are some people that are not necessarily comfortable with that and they'd rather call us and we can definitely take a reservation over the phone. If you just show up here, uh, we can also book that time for you. However, it is a little bit uh, more risky, especially since you may not know if somebody already has a booking for that time. So when we decided to do this, we were just like, let's do this. This is a super fun thing to give to people. When the new Douglas County Courthouse was opened in 1998, close attention was paid to transferring historically significant landmarks, statues, and other items. One of those landmarks was the Eternal Flame, which was placed in front of the courthouse in what's called the Court of Honor. Here is Wes Talon to explain why this area is so important. The eternal flame saluting our soldiers is located in the Court of Honor in front of the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive. It was originally installed on Courthouse Square in 1970 and was donated by American Legion Post 145. It was moved from the old Courthouse Square on May 2nd, 1998 when we dedicated the new courthouse. The flame was carried by veterans in a parade processional from the old courthouse to the new one, and it was lit by the commanders of the American Legion and vets and the veterans of foreign wars during a courthouse dedication ceremony. The monument is dedicated to the glory of God and to the veterans of all wars, and at its base are 49 names of Douglas County citizens who have given the ultimate sacrifice from World War I through Afghanistan. It's called the Flame of Freedom, and it never goes out. As always, the school system has some things they would like to brag about. For the first time, all elementary schools in Douglas County offered kindergarten camp to incoming kindergarten students. Approximately 650 kindergarten students across the county registered for the camp, which took place July 24th through 27th. In addition to enjoying literacy and math activities in the classrooms, students became familiar with their school buildings and learned procedures in the cafeteria. This should make for a much smoother transition into elementary school. Also, the Douglas County school system has a change in bus procedure. A parent or guardian must be present at the bus stop for children in third grade and below to disembark the bus. If a student in grades K through three has a sibling on the bus who is in the fourth or fifth grade, the younger sibling will be allowed to exit the bus with the older sibling. If a parent, guardian, or parent guardian designee is not present at the bus stop to receive the child, or if the child appears to have no appropriate supervision, the student will be taken back to the school. Safety is our first priority and we feel it is imperative that young children are properly supervised at all times, said Superintendent Trent North. We hope parents will understand and appreciate the extra precautions we are taking this year. Parents can sign a waiver that allows their child to exit the bus without a guardian present and the school system is released of liability. On June 29, 2017, Governor Nathan Deal announced that three schools in Douglas County were awarded Innovation Fund Tiny Grants from the Governor's Office of Student Achievement. The grants are for applied learning with a focus on science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, or STEAM education. Arbor Station Elementary, Sweetwater Elementary, and Alexander High will receive a grand total of about $25,000 for various programs in these STEAM areas. Austin Teal, rising senior at Chapel Hill High School in Douglas County, was honored in May 2017 
at a luncheon sponsored by the National Association of Women in Construction. Students in architecture classes at Chapel Hill High School and Jordan Vocational High School in Columbus, Georgia competed in the 2016 through 2017 National Education Foundation, or NEF, CAD Design and Drafting Competition. They were assigned the project of designing a dental office using CAD software. Austin placed first in Chapel Hill High School and presented his project to the audience at the luncheon. Austin is the son of Mitzi and Adrian Teal of Douglasville. DC TV 23 is proud to announce a new show. Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones made it a priority to recognize our senior citizens for what they bring to the community. One way she has tackled this mission is by creating a new show filmed at the Woody Fight Senior Center to announce the seniors' birthdays. The show airs immediately after the replays of the Board of Commission meeting, daily at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. You can also watch the birthday party show online at dctv23.com. Here is the most recent episode. Good morning, happy birthday to our seniors. We're here to celebrate your birthday today. My name is Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones and I'm the Douglas County Commission Chairman. And it's an honor to celebrate your uh, special day today. And with us is our uh, director of Woody Fight, Sharon. Yes, hi, I'm Sharon Johnson, the director at Woody Fight. Have been for a little while, so. Uh, Come August, I'll celebrate 10 years here, so. Well, congratulations. Maybe it's time to be moving on, you think? No, we we'll, need we'll, you. Okay, we'll see, we'll <laughs> see. Today we do have our June birthday people here, and I welcome you. Our crowd is not very big this year. I'm not sure why. Maybe there were not a whole lot of babies born in June <laughs> way back when. I don't know. But we're going to enjoy the ones that are here now. So I'm going to be going around the room in a few minutes, and you can be thinking about this. I need your name. I need your birth date. If you want to tell me your age, go ahead. I think it'd be a good idea. Honey, be proud. Be proud of that age at this point. I'm proud of mine. Um, and also, I'd like to know a little bit about where you were born and any travels that you've had during your lifetime. Uh, we're very, very happy that Hightower's Funeral Home is here again, and they're furnishing the cake. We'll be serving cake and punch here very shortly. And also, Rite Aid Pharmacy over here is uh, doing our bingo game today. We so wow. appreciate the business community here in Douglasville that helps support all the different events that we have. So welcome to Rite Aid and welcome to Hightower's. Thank you all so much. So we're going to start over here. Since we have the one gentleman, right? This yeah. is the birthday. We're going to start with him. He's kind of by himself here. Okay, this is... Jim Harper. When's your birthday? 10th of June. 10th of June. Wow. Ju 1940. Ni ni 1940, right. Okay, and where were you born, Jim? Tallahassee, Alabama. Okay, Alabama person. Have you always lived in either Alabama or in Georgia? No, I spent most of my time in Michigan. Oh my goodness, wow. he got way, way away from the South at that point. Okay, your family lived in Michigan? Yeah, my dad and stepmother lived in Michigan. When I got out of the service, I went to live with them. You went to live with them, okay. And then you finally found your way back to the South, right? Yep. Well, we're glad you did. You want to tell us how old you are? 77. Ooh. 77. We're Happy about, birthday. Happy birthday. And what branch of service were you Air in? Air Force. All right. Thank you for serving, and happy birthday. Okay. Who do we have over here? Hi. I'm Jackie DeSeam, and I'm a new uh, transplant. I, um, I was born in Jamaica in the, on the island, mm -hmm. but I spent the last uh, 30 years in New York City. I recently retired last year. I was a school teacher, and I love Douglasville because you guys value 
uh, older adults, and so I'm being spoiled. <laughs> and I, I just want to say, keep up the good work. I'm a baby. Um, I turned 61 <laughs> on Monday. Well, congratulations. Congra and we are glad you are here, Jackie. It's so nice to hear that you really appreciate what Douglas County's doing for seniors. I do. So. I put it on my Facebook, so that's how, and I'm trying to encourage my sister to join me here. Okay, <coughs> fantastic. Well, happy birthday, Jackie. Thank you. thank you, and thank you for your many years of service in the classroom. Thank what you. What grade did you teach? I taught uh, middle school, six to eight. Oh. I was an ELA teacher. Well, thank you for your service, and happy birthday again. Thank you. Being a new transplant, um, it was awesome having uh, this center here, because otherwise I would have been lost. So to, to come in and, and develop friendships and relationships here at the center was what helped me to make that transition. So keep up the good work. <laughs> thank you. I so appreciate that. It really makes it worthwhile when we have a testimony like this. And what a lot of people do not realize is the fact that a lot of our seniors do move into this area because of family. Mm -hmm. Family are here, and then sometimes family gets transferred somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They want to stay in Douglasville and yes, stay with us. Right. Yeah. And we're very, very thankful for that. Okay. My name is Carol White. As of June 22nd, I will be 70. Yay! Yay! I was born in Savannah, Georgia, and I've been in Douglasville probably about three years now, and I love Woody Fight Center. All the classes, all the activities that go on here, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> all right, we're glad Thank you're you here, happy too. Birthday. Thank you. Give us your name, dear. Loretta Beals. Okay, and where were you born? Baton Rouge, Louisiana. All oh, right, Louisiana, one of my favorite places. Love gumbo and shrimp and grits, honey. There you go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to tell us how old you are? Uh, I'll be 60. Well, good for you. Oh, good. Well, how long have you been in Douglasville? Um, about eight years. Okay, very well. What brought you to Douglasville? Actually, um, my daughter ended up moving up here to Douglasville, but I moved to College Park when I first came up. I used to work for the phone company. So okay. I was closer to that, and that's what brought me to Georgia from the beginning. You know, okay. Say, Maybe the hurricane. No, it wasn't the hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> it was family, and that, that's yes. what happens when a lot of people move into our areas, their families here. Mm -hmm. And well, we're glad you're here. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> and happy <laughs> birthday. Thank you. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, our birthday people are right now getting some cake and some punch. We wish you all a very happy birthday, a long and full life, and that we're glad that you came today. And you need to tell everybody else about what they missed, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you all, and happy birthday again, and enjoy your, this entire month is your, your month, so thank you, the month of June. It takes a village, and education is no exception. That's why it is a priority of the Douglas County School System to get the community involved as much as possible. The Partners in Education, or PI, program seeks to pair businesses and individuals up with schools for everything from monetary support to field trip chaperones. The 2017-2018 PET program was kicked off recently with a breakfast and a word from our new superintendent, Trent North. Here's a clip from the program. My first 60 days in Douglas County has been awesome. We spent two days at a system leadership retreat. And the thing that permeated those two days was what can we do to make sure that everyone who enters any of our buildings that they know they're welcome. And we talked about a concept we call a welcoming ethos. I'm just gonna spend a couple of moments sharing that with you because we want you to experience that. And the example I use is we all have relatives and there are some relatives when I go and visit and they, when I enter the door, they tell me that I'm welcome. 
but I know that's protocol. I know that I'm really not welcome, uh, that, you know, it's my mama's brother, so they want me to come. But then I have other family members that I go and visit, and they never say it. And even though they don't say it, I know that I'm free to walk about the house. I know that they are excited about me being there. And what we don't realize is sometimes inadvertently, we make people um, not feel welcome when they come into different parts of our system. And so we've decided as a district that we're gonna work on and create plans so that regardless uh, of who you are or where you come from, that when you enter any part of Douglas County, that you know you are welcome. So that's the first thing we're working on. And, and the second thing is, we want to be more accessible. We want you to feel comfortable, not just coming to the superintendent, but going, uh, reaching out to anyone in Douglas County and feeling that you're going to get an answer, and it's not going to be an answer that's going to make you feel like you've just been handled. We want you to know that we value your partnership. So I'm excited about being the new superintendent of Douglas County. I'm excited about partnering with all of the partners in the room. I'm excited about the opportunity to continue all of the awesome things that Dr. Pritz and his staff has already started. I'm not coming as a change agent. I'm not coming to undo all of the great things that are currently occurring. But I am coming to contribute just a little bit because if I came and everything stayed the same, then I would have been a bad investment for Douglas County. So we are gonna tweak some things here and there because you should expect that from me. I wanna leave with this before I open for questions. How, I'm always asked, how can we help Douglas County school system? And here's how we would like for you to help us. We, we value your partnership and we love how you have access to our teachers and to our students and there's this genuine partnership. What we really need, in addition to that, are more ambassadors. You all have some good things occurring in Douglas County. And I come from Carrollton City School System, and I know Carrollton City School System's data. And I'm in Douglas County now, and I've had the opportunity to learn Douglas School System data. Carrollton City School System isn't any better than Douglas County. The difference is there are more ambassadors outside the school system who are standing up and vouching for the great things that are occurring in the Carrollton City school system. So what we're looking for in Douglas County is supporters in addition to those who work within the Douglas school system to stand up for your school system and to be ambassadors. And so not for a specific school, but for all of Douglas County schools. I'm confident that if your child goes to Lithia Springs, they're gonna receive a quality education. So whether it's Lithia Springs or Alexander or Chapel Hill or Douglas County or New Manchester, we have quality people in Douglas County. And so we need more ambassadors joining us in articulating that. And, and, and so I implore you and I encourage you, support us as we strive to continue making Douglas County and also school system. Like the school system, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office strives to foster a positive relationship with the community. The best way to do that is through the kids. An annual Kids Law Enforcement Academy Camp was held this summer to teach kids about social media safety, bullying, and other topics that might be of importance to our younger population. Here is Jesse Hambrick to explain the camp and another way that the Sheriff's Office is connecting with the community, and it might just make you hungry. Well, this is a program that the city of Villarica started uh, 10 or 11 years ago, and they had, it was a smaller type program because they didn't have quite as many kids. Actually, they wanted to make it bigger and better. They came to us and said, hey, do y'all want to throw in on this? And as we got kind of brainstorming, we were like, well, Mirror Lake Elementary is both city of, of Villarica and Douglas County. We talked with the principal at the school. She was like, great, yeah, we'd love to have you. Um, it's just an opportunity for the kids to come and learn a little bit about everything safety related, uh, everything from gun safety to internet safety to predator safety, fire safety. I mean, we just kind of jammed it full of things that we think at the end of the week will make the kids more safe, more able to, to help take care of their 
friends and family around them and that kind of stuff as well. We've learned about how they've solved murder mysteries, what, what they used to find a culprit at a crime scene, and just many different things. And today I'm having a lot of fun. I've met new friends and I'd recommend it to any other people that would like to do it. We've been learning about bullying and crime scenes and we've just, it's been really fun. So next year what we're gonna try to do is join forces with Villarica again and we're gonna do a west side camp and then there's been talk about doing an east side camp um, for those kids it's a little too far to drive so we'll do a Douglas County and maybe Villarica east side camp next year because they talked about maybe helping us a little bit with our camp so we're here to learn from them and then we're gonna try to take it and deliver it even more to more kids in Douglas County next year. So one of the things that kind of is another program that's separate, but we wanted to bring it into the, the kids camp, was the Polar Patrol. And that was a program that uh, Deputy Mark Matthews, he came to us and said, I got this great idea, and uh, I don't laugh until you, you know, hear what I've got to say. And uh, he talked about the ice cream truck, it's something they're doing at the Boston Police Department. And uh, we were like, okay, well, I mean, let's hear it. And the sheriff immediately loved it. He was like, yes, we need to be doing this. So just to let those people know, A, it's not taxpayers' dollars, it's, it's seized drug funds that were used to purchase the vehicle, and then everything from that point on was donated. Um, Extreme uh, uh, did the, the wrapping and all for us. I know there was a couple of different clubs that got involved. I know we got a check the other day from another company. So the wrapping, the ice cream, everything, that's all purchased through donations. And really the only thing the Sheriff's Department has, has got any, I guess, involvement in is the, the officers who are running it. And uh, it's been fantastic. The important part of that is some people may be afraid to call or report crime or report something that they see that's going on in their neighborhood. Or they may feel maybe a little less uh, you know, inclined to call about a problem they're dealing with. Well, they're like, hey, I know that guy. He gave me an ice cream. We talked for 10 or 15 minutes or whatever. And it really does kind of bring the sheriff's office and the community together in a way that they meet us, they see us personally, they know to call us, they can ask for us by name, and it, and it makes the community a better place. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office has an app that you can download on both of the platforms, whether it be Google or, or Andrew, uh, Apple. Both the Sheriff's Department and the City of Villarica has Facebook pages they operate, putting out a lot of great information. And then I know that the Sheriff's Office also has uh, Instagram and Twitter. And of course, both of us have uh, websites. So you can just type in Villarica PD or type in Douglas County SO, and there's gonna be a ton of stuff that comes back just to keep you up to date on not just the academies, but the ice cream truck and where it's gonna be and weather reports and I mean, everything kind of one-stop shop. There's, there's all that information there. Thanks so much for watching DCTV 23. If you need any additional information about what you saw on the show today, all you have to do is go to our website at celebratedouglascounty.com or email us at dctv23 at co.douglas.ga.us. Be sure to check out all of our shows here on your source for local news and entertainment. DCTV23 is always on at Comcast Channel 23 AT&T Uverse Channel 99 and online at DCTV23.com.